Good morning. I'm Byron Hendricks with the Prudential Real Estate Professionals. I'm thrilled to be able to participate with you, even though by video, in our update on DocuWare. And what we decided to do uh, is, one, share with you the exciting benefits of you or for you on this new program, but I also wanted to review your requirements as a professional real estate licensee for documents. So we're turning this into continuing education, and our goal today in compliance with the law is to help you understand the requirements that you have as a licensee to tender all your documents to your principal broker for supervision, and I'm going to take you through some of the administrative rules and statutes that specify your requirements. So uh, I'm thankful that you're participating, and I know you're going to enjoy this program. Your staff will be with you to train you on how to use DocuWare. I think what you're really going to enjoy about it is the fact that it will operate in your Outlook platform. So it simplifies the way that you can tender documents, the way you can store documents, and the way you can retrieve documents. I know you'll be pleased with the activity uh, that's a, that you can conduct using uh, DocuWare and your Outlook program. The neat part about it is it's available to you anywhere you have an internet connection. Whether you're doing it with a desktop, laptop, or your PDA, you're going to be able to re retrieve any document in your file, be able to send it to your client if you wish, or send it to your broker or principal broker, and I know you're going to enjoy the simplicity of the process. So let's talk a little bit about the requirements of documents. It's fascinating to me when, uh, as your risk reduction officer, uh, when we have a claim made against us, one of the queries that comes to us is we'd like a copy of your file. We don't happily comply, but we obediently comply. We get all the documents together and send them off, and then I get a second request. You might be able to guess what that is. They'll ask us, no, we'd like a copy of your broker's file also. Now, under the law, those files should be identical in practice, I'll tell you that they're not, and there's a real danger to a licensee in that process. So I'm going to take you through what the requirements are, and I'm going to need to uh, read them to you. So uh, Ken got me about the smallest print we could get on this, but I want to start with 696.010. You can see that that's the area that talks about professional real estate activity, and it's important that I share it with you uh, just to remind you of what the agency considers professional real estate activity. The, and it says, professional real estate activity means any of the following actions that are engaged in with the expectation of compensation. I'm abbreviating it some. You can see your copy in front of you that will help you uh, get full uh, and accurate replication of the law if that's important to you. But when we talk about that compensation, we commonly think, okay, we close a deal, we get a check. It's a great thing. But the reality is compensation is anything of value. So if you do a CMA for somebody, for example, and you don't charge him for it, but he's going to come over and help you with uh, digging a ditch with his backhoe or something, that, under the law, is compensation. So you just need to be thinking about those activities. So the activities that they define are selling or exchanging property, uh, negotiating offers, listing property, uh, uh, auctions, buying, selling options in real estate, and in engaging in management of real estate or purports to be engaged in the business of buying and selling real estate. So remember, it says comp uh, activities done for another person with the expectation of compensation. So if you're doing management of your own rental real estate, for example, you don't have to tender any documents to us. But uh, your transactions that you do for yourself, even if the property is not listed with us, if you're a principal in it, we must maintain a file on transactional real estate activity uh, when you uh, buy or sell a property. So you want to make sure you're tendering those in to us. Okay, next I want to jump to 696.280, and that's the division of the statute that re uh, states what records we must maintain. You can read the whole rule if you wish, but I want to jump to the area that I think is material and where you often see sales associates in violation. And that's uh, in paragraph one. It says a real estate broker, a principal real estate broker, shall maintain records of all professional real estate activity conducted through the broker. And the agency shall specify by rule the records required 
to um, establish complete and adequate records of a broker's professional real estate activity. The only documents the agency may require by rule a real estate broker or principal real estate broker to use or generate are documents that are otherwise required by law, and this is the catch, or are voluntarily generated during a real estate transaction. Well, documents required by law are simple. It says offers to purchase or sell real estate uh, must be in written form. That's a statute of frauds. It goes way back to the uh, basically the beginning of time uh, of contract law, I should say. Uh, but uh, the agency specifically defines that offers have to be in writing also. But it's that last piece or any uh, documents that are voluntarily generated during a real estate transaction. So what might those be? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that are voluntarily generated. Certainly, emails on the transaction is a requirement because they're voluntarily generated. They're done under the scope of professional real estate activity. And I think they really are uh, an area that is commonly overlooked in a broker's file. Inspection reports, appraisal reports, any document that's there that's voluntarily generated, you have a duty to tender to us and we have a duty to maintain so that you have a complete record of file. With DocuWare, you're going to find this process is extremely simple. As the staff is going to show you, basically you can walk up to any of our copy machines, go to docs, uh, submit a document to docs at prorep.com, and I'd recommend you copy yourself on, the trans on that uh, uh, sand also, so your records are always going to match ours, and I think it'll work pretty well. I want to jump to 696.310. We probably all know that one. It's, uh, we used to call it 28 ways to use your license. The good news is there's only 15 ways now. The bad news is they broadened out the 15th to make sure it covered all the things rather than trying to be specific. But as you can see in your record, 696.301 says these are the grounds for discipline. I'm not going to read through each one of these, but I think if you jump down to uh, number 15, it says, engaged in any conduct that is below the standard of care for the practice of professional real estate activity in Oregon. That's pretty complete uh, and pretty broad, and I think it's an area you really need to understand that uh, not only could it cause civil claims against you, but it could cause license sanction against you. And the way that defense attorneys, or excuse me, uh, plaintiff's attorneys work in this process is they'll often get the agency to bust you on the issue and then use that to lower their cost in defending the claim and their goal is to try and prove that you're incompetent. Now I know you're not incompetent but if you give me a complete set of records we can really help defend you in that uh, claim. Here's another interesting thing when you think about these records. Uh, we can all think of instances where um, uh, across the nation where outside of the real estate business where documents have been destroyed to try and protect a company from claim. Probably one of the most famous examples of that was Enron where when the house of cards started to fall in they sent really a countless number of staff in and started shredding and destroying any documents that were incriminating. Well that got prison time for people and frankly we're not only subject to sanction by the real estate agency, the attorneys generals uh, general across the country have that uh, purview over us also and say if you are destroying records, let's say you had an email that, uh, well, maybe you got angry with your customer and responded inappropriately. And so you thought, I'm just going to get rid of that thing. I don't like to be reminded that I let my temper take over uh, my logic. Well, the reality is if you destroy that record, you are uh, subjecting yourself to sanctions. So first, be cautious with every uh, email you send. Second, keep the record and tender it to us in the file. <laughs> One of the things Ken's done a beautiful job for us is setting up our voicemail system so we now get those records on our email. We're notified that we have the uh, voicemail in our uh, inbox and you have a WAV file right there that has the voicemail message. Tender them. Greatest thing in the world that if we're defending the claim four, five, six, seven, eight years from now and they can go that long, 
uh, its discovery on the statute of frauds where if we'd recommended, for example, a buyer get a well flow test on his property and we get a voicemail back from him saying, your brother-in-law must be the inspector. Anybody that charged 450 bucks to tell me I got water there is a crook. I'm not doing it. Well, if we've got that as a voicemail record in the file, do you think that might help us later when the well ran dry and he's looking for some sanction recovery? So I'm going to jump now to 863.15.140. And you'll see 863.15, and there's a number of uh, the chapters in there that really define this uh, requirement of activity. I'm not going to take the time to go through each one of these with you. But I want to talk about 140 because it defines a principal broker's supervision requirement. And I'm going to jump down to number three. You can read all of it if you like. It's in your handouts. But a principal broker must supervise and control the professional real estate activity of a broker. Okay, so what's the role we serve? Yeah, I think oftentimes people say, well, you're the cop. You're the one trying to make sure that uh, uh, I'm complying with the law. And you know what? That is part of our responsibility. We are committed to you and we're committed to the agency as professional licensees that we will do our job. But, you know, it goes beyond that. If you think of many different practices, whether, you know, it be an engineering firm or an architectural firm or a surgeon, uh, surgery group or even attorneys, they'll oftentimes have somebody else look over their plans to make sure that they're on track. I think all of us have written an email or a letter or communicated a message even verbally and it's crystal clear in our mind what we mean to say, but the person receiving that information, it, uh, it doesn't find it crystal clear. When you write a real estate transaction document, the thing I challenge my principal brokers to do in their review, when they look at it is, is, is say, could a third party close the transaction based on the written instructions as they stand. And if the answer to that is yes, we're in great shape. If the answer is that, to that is no, we've got to clean it up. We have to make sure that if for some reason the two licensees involved in the transaction, assuming there are two, uh, weren't available, that we could say we know where the meeting of the minds occurred on this. So you've got a trusted advisor in real estate helping you by looking at your documents and saying, you know what, here's an area we might be able to make sure we can clean up so you get a paycheck in this transaction. Our clients are well represented. So it's beyond a cop's role. It's a trusted advisor having a look at it. And I'll tell you, I think it's a real benefit to a professional licensee as he's going through there, uh, through these activities. Next, in number four, it says a principal real estate broker must directly supervise licensees associated with the broker in fulfilling their duties and obligations to their respective clients. So it's pretty clear that we have to be looking at all transactional documents. It goes on further that we have to review uh, a document uh, or agreement that originates in the office and that uh, we can do it electronically or by hard copy and we have to do date and time that uh, uh, we did that review. So what's the time period for you to submit a transactional document to us for review? Yeah, seven days is correct. But, you know, does that mean that you go out seven days and then submit it and we review it and everything's great? No, obviously your requirement to us is to submit the document as soon as reasonably possible. You don't have to, have to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and drive down to the office and. Uh, scan it in, but you know the next uh, p practical moment is is the right way for you to look at it, because when you send a document in to us, it's date and time stamped, so we know what time we received it from you. If you get an area there that's five or six days out beyond when the uh, the transaction uh, was originated, and your client's damaged, I think there's a possibility for sanction in that, and you want to be careful. We want to help you. We want to help our clients. Submitting them in early is the right thing for you to do and uh, is the right thing for all of us to be able to do the best job we possibly can for our clients. So we've talked about the need to provide records. Uh, let's, let's think about a CMA, for example. Let's say we go do a CMA intending to get the listing, so we're doing it for another person. We're expecting compensation, okay? 
Now, we don't get the listing. Do you need to tender that CMA to us? Well, the answer is yes. Because it's professional real estate activity, because it was done with the expectation of compensation, you need to tender that CMA in. We'll store it in a file and we'll keep it on record. Are the odds high that we'd see some sanction activity from that? I'd say no. But standard of practice is the key thing for you to think about. And you'll remember back to 696.301 where it talks about this um, uh, standard of care that would happen by, in the industry as a licensee. And that's the measurement. So if you can exceed in that level, we can help defend you in that process. Last, I'm going to jump to 863.15.250. You can take a look at that uh, at your leisure. But it talks about records rules. And it specifically says that we must maintain complete and adequate records of professional real estate activity, including complete, legible, and permanent copies of all documents required by law or voluntarily generated during a real estate transaction. So I think that's pretty clear that your file and our file should be the same thing. DocuWare is going to make that real simple for you to do. You can see specifically that they define uh, under 863.15.280, uh, they define each uh, specific item uh, that you're required to tender. I would guess the best way for us to look at it is if you're handling something for one of your clients, you should tender documents into us. It specifically talks about your requirement to do that under the term of your agency relationship with that client. So how long does your agency relationship last? Some people say, well, it ends at closing. But the fact of the matter is, unless you've done something that specifically says my agency relationship with you will extinguish at uh, closing, or let's say you did a specific date, like September 30th, 2012. If you had those tied together and you ended your agency relationship, you, uh, it, it would truly have an end date to it. We don't do that. I don't think it's good business for you to do that. So the reality is for you, once you enter into an agency relationship with a client, for that specific transaction, that will continue on after closing and actually indefinitely unless it's ended in some way. So, you know, you think of a transaction that closes and uh, a month after it closes, you get an email from the client saying, you know, I think the seller misrepresented uh, their uh, position on the sale of this property. Well, that's the ter under the term of your agency relationship, so we need those documents. Okay, we need those emails or we need your communication log on it. We need everything to do that's voluntarily generated into the, under the terms of the agency relationship. So it's simple. They're going to give you a transaction cover sheet for this. You can keep that in your paper file if you wish, or you can just jot down the number of it. You'll be able to go to docs at prerep.com, put in that transaction number. We know exactly what to do with it when it's handled. It's one place to deposit your documents. You can copy yourself on it at that time, put it right into your Outlook folder file, and have a great system to take care of your clients, to take care of yourself, and to grow your business with professional real estate activity. Thanks so much for spending the time with me this morning. Staff's going to take you through DocuWare training. I think you're going to enjoy this new system. Let's go get them.